Good morning, Pastor Connor here. It is 7.30 on April 22nd. Thanks for taking time to be with me today and spend a few moments in reflection and prayer. I always appreciate the opportunity to be with you. So, okay, on Tuesday, we started talking about what, what I'm calling um, our inside voice, just for lack of a better phrase. So remember, we're not talking about, again, the volume of our voice. We're talking about the voice or the thoughts that loop in our minds. And we all have these thought loops and they, they color the way we see and the way we process the world. So we've emphasized how important it is to bring this truth, to bring the truth of the Lord, this external truth, into our thinking, right? And this, like I mentioned, this truth originates from beyond us. And this is just so important to get right because everything in our world tells us that um, you live your truth, right? And remind me, uh, uh, next week, I, I'm going to bring in a little comic at some point, uh, Salt and Pepper out of the Wall Street Journal, uh, which, which highlights this exceptionally well. But we live in a culture that emphasizes your truth as if truth comes from inside of you. And we're saying, no, not at all. Truth comes from beyond us, from God himself. It echoes in his word. And it's so important for us to, to make sure we are giving priority to that external word of truth and not to our inside voice. So we have to work really hard not to give priority to this inside voice, right? So we have to train our minds to latch on to this external voice of scripture and then to rehearse it every day, to rehearse this truth every day. And like we've said so many times before, it's really important to hear this truth and to speak this truth out loud. And this is one of the reasons why the public gathering of the church is so important. Right? God doesn't bring us together just to sit around and read our Bibles quietly, which, don't get me wrong, that's a good thing to read our Bibles individually. But he brings his people together to read and to hear and to speak and to sing, and we might say even to taste in the sacrament the very word of God, and, and to do all of this out loud. And this, this helps us fight back against this inside voice that can so easily mislead us. Okay, so thus far we've talked about, so far this week we've talked about all or nothing thinking, we've talked about overgeneralizing, we've talked about filtering out the positive and mind reading. Now, if you missed those, you might want to go back the last couple days and watch them because some really important stuff in there. I mean, really great stuff that go a long way toward mental health. And, and I encourage you to watch those if you haven't watched them yet. But we're going to press on for today and get to our two uh, inside voices for today. So number one for today is catastrophizing. Catastrophizing. So this inside voice writes the end of the story far in advance of its actual ending, and it writes it in the worst way imaginable, right? And some of, it, some of us, we're really good at this. I mean, some of us should be authors, right? Because we can write some remarkable stories. So we are so certain, at least we believe we are, we are so certain the way things are going to turn out. And we're just so certain that it's going to be terrible. We're absolutely convinced it's going to be terrible. I heard somebody put it this way once. Uh, a woman catastrophizer reflected upon her life, and she said, I've had many catastrophes in my life. Most of them never happened. Right? I mean, see, the thing is, in her mind, she was so sure they were going to happen that she lived as if they were, as if they were happening at that moment. And she's going through all the emotions of the catastrophe, and it hasn't happened, and most of them never did. And that's such a crushing way to live. Right? I think of Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 6. He says, Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. 
Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. In other words, today has enough trouble, right? Don't import tomorrow's trouble into today. So when we listen to that catastrophizing voice, we believe something that we cannot know to be true. We believe something that we cannot know to be true. And then we build our emotions on that something we don't know. And then we justify our behavior on something that we don't know to be true. I mean, look, could the worst happen? Yes, it could. Sometimes it does. But do we know for certain that it's going to happen? Absolutely not. We don't know that. So we can't build our emotions and our behaviors on what we don't know. So we might call this, right, the chicken little syndrome. We get a bump on our head and we conclude the sky is falling. But look, all right, a bump on your head doesn't mean the whole sky is falling. An apple may have left a bruise on your head and there may be more falling apples on their way. But, and this is really important, okay, really important. God hasn't ceased being God. He hasn't. His promises, they have not become untrue because you got pummeled by falling fruit or because you might get pummeled by falling fruit. God promises grace sufficient for each day and each moment. But catastrophizing writes a future devoid of God's grace and a present that is blind to it. It writes a future that is devoid of God's grace and a present that is blind to it. We need to hear the external voice of truth, the external word of truth in God's word to be reminded of God's daily grace. Right, so what does Paul say in Romans chapter 8? For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. There is no catastrophe that can remove you from God's love for you in Christ. Not one. Yes, catastrophes can and they do happen. But first of all, far less frequently than this inside voice would lead us to believe. And second, there is no catastrophe that removes you from God's love for you in Jesus Christ. Okay, number two, emotional reasoning emotional reasoning. This inside voice urges us to peddle in emotions, fear and anger, or even happiness, and then not in reason and thought. And this is really important, okay? We forget sometimes that it's impossible to have a feeling that is not preceded by and built upon beliefs founded upon what we believe to be true about the world and or this particular situation. All right? What you believe, and we've talked about this so many times, what you believe affects what you feel, affects what you do. What you believe affects what you feel, affects what you do. So if you believe that everybody hates you, well, you're going to follow up with certain emotions and then certain behaviors. If you believe that people disagree with you because they don't like you or they're, they're just mean people, then you're going to follow up with certain emotions and with certain behaviors. If you believe that God is king and that he is righteous and he's a just king, then you're going to follow up with certain emotions and certain behaviors. What you believe to be true affects what you feel, affects what you do. So the external voice of truth encourages us to examine our beliefs, 
the thoughts that we have about reality and or a particular situation. Are our thoughts, our beliefs, are they true? Are they true? That's a really important question. And this is where saying your thoughts or your beliefs out loud, whether to another person that you can trust, or even just to the mirror, this is where this can be exceedingly useful because emotions are really strong and they can blind us to the beliefs and the thoughts that are behind them. So the first question is not, how do I feel about this? It's so important. It's not, how do I feel about this? Now, it's not that feelings are useless, right? Feelings can alert us to the not rightness of something or even to the rightness of something. But feelings must be informed by and guided by truth. And truth does not originate from within us. Okay, again, we are not saying that emotions are invalid. We're saying that emotions are not king. They cannot rule our minds. Truth must, and truth comes from beyond us. So what we really need to work at is speaking our beliefs about reality, about a particular situation out loud so that we can compare them to truth, to God's truth. So we need to bring our thoughts into the light so that we can bring the external word, to tr word of truth to bear on the matter, so that we can get our emotions in line with the truth. And I have to tell you, this is really hard because we are not trained as a culture to do this. Not at all. I mean, emotions pretty much function as king in our culture. And dethroning an existing king that is never an easy thing to do. But if we don't dethrone him and put truth back on the throne, we're going to continue to peddle in emotions and emotional reasoning. And look, we're going to be easily misled. So we really have to watch out for that. So instead of zeroing in on how we feel about something, we need to zero in on what we're thinking about it. Okay? We need to evaluate the truthfulness of our thoughts before we consider the intensity of our emotions. Okay, make sure you understand that. We need to evaluate the truthfulness of our thoughts before we consider the intensity of our emotions. It may be that our emotions, being based on something that isn't true, are false emotions. Right. False emotions emotions. Now, don't mishear me. I'm not saying they're false as, as if you're not having them. I'm saying they're false because they're built on a belief that isn't true. And that makes them wrong, no matter how intensely you feel them. Okay, so catastrophizing and emotional reasoning. And there's a lot to take in there. So you may want to watch this again. Or you're certainly welcome to shoot me a question or you know, visit with me. I'm happy to visit on this. If you want further resources on this, I'm happy to share. I welcome your thoughts and questions. But let us stop to take a moment to pray. Loving Lord, God of truth, we give you all glory and praise for communicating truth to us in your Son and in the Scriptures. Teach us to hear your truth. Teach us to rehearse your truth. Teach us to gather with the church as together we hear and rehearse your truth. And help us to speak this truth into our lives. To speak against the inside voice that so often misleads us. The inside voice that urges us to catastrophize the future. That urges us to assume the worst possible outcome. And then blinds us to your real and present grace for each day. Help us to speak your truth into our lives, to counter the inside voice that urges us to peddle in emotions, that urges us to ignore our foundational beliefs and to focus only on how we feel about things. Help us understand that emotions are guided by beliefs. So to have true emotions, we must first have true beliefs. And this truth is found in you and your word. 
We give you all glory and praise, Lord, with your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for taking time to join me today. Always appreciate sharing with you. I look forward to being back tomorrow. I wish you God's blessings on your day.